Now that we understand a little bit about how these commands work, let's actually try them out in the Aspen 1624. So what I'm going to do now is notice if you go all the way to the end and we type in control T or you can simply choose the command terminal tab we're now in a command terminal where we can type in these commands so let's try something um, like input gain 5 equals 10 much like we were typing in notepad when we hit return it says OK now the box accepted the command let's try this I N G N H or some random letter maybe Z whatever it might be and let's try that and it comes back with an error it didn't understand that particular command so now we can try some other commands how about ID question mark that will give us the type of device that we're talking to it tells us that it's an SPN 1624 what's the serial number it gives us the serial number now how about the firmware version so we have access to absolutely everything and once again if we go to help you'll notice that we have all of the commands here if I go to general commands I tried some of these commands there's the ID question mark and if I click on it it says it can only be a query I can't set the ID the ID is not a command I can simply ask what it is and it shows me what the response is going to be uh, okay and then the device with the carriage return and a line feed and it shows me the request that needs to be sent to the box ID question mark all commands are lowercase and a carriage return so very easy to implement well let's see what some of the other commands are I'll click on the general tab again and we can find out what the baud rate is of the serial port baud question mark so let's try that and if I come down here and I type in baud question mark it set at 57.6 so we are, are able to ask anything we like and all of the commands once again are explained and they're categorized very nicely um, if we want to see the internal temperature of the device we can do that as well and once again that's a query um, let's try some of the other audio inputs how about input mute we can it shows that it's a query and an update and let's do that as well now let's also go one further here I'm going to type in input mute of channel 1 question I want to know what the state is and if I look at it it says OK that it's not muted and if I were to look at the input I can see that indeed it is not muted so let's go back to the command terminal and let's mute it INMT equals 1 now it's muted and if we have a look now we have a muted state so we're controlling all of these values uh, directly from lines of code which makes it very convenient now if we go one step further let's say that you do not want to program you don't want to type any commands into a macro you want a way that's maybe more convenient uh, and a method that can do it for you you want not only the simplicity of the drop down menus like we did earlier but you also want the flexibility that a macro offers by offering multiple commands but you don't want to type any code well there's a method to do that as well if we go to the macros menu we can start the macro recorder now notice it says macro recording enabled so let's mute an input let's change the gain of input number two maybe to 50 okay and it shows now the slider moves shows that it's 50 I typed in 50 and hit return let's go to the matrix and uh, we can see within the matrix now we have some cross points that are enabled uh, we could change some cross points here if we wanted to or we could go to uh, output source and uh, we can turn on 
uh, perhaps the pink noise generator in channel one, or let's turn it on in channel four. Okay, so we have uh, done a few things. We've muted input number one. We've changed the uh, output source uh, to pink noise, and then we also changed the gain value of input number two to 50. So let's go and we will stop the macro recorder. Notice the macro editor comes up. And the macro editor shows me the exact things that I did in a command form. Remember I muted input channel one? Well, it shows me that I input mute number one equals one. I went to the input gain of two and set that to 50. And then I set the pink noise on and uh, that the command for that is 130. And if you were to question that particular command, we can look it up in the help menu and, and see what all the commands are, and they will be exactly what we see here. So we can name our macro. Let's call this cool macro. And notice now we have two other submenus. We're interested in the device menu. We want to store to a memory location, store to device memory. We could also run the macro right now to test it if we like, but let's store it and we'll do something else. Okay, store to device memory. Now I can choose a location. Now notice for macro number 20, which it brought up, it's titled on, meaning I already have a macro within that memory location. 21 is titled off. 22, uh, there's no macro present. So let's store it to that location. I'll click OK. It's going to write the macro to the memory location. It's done. And so now I can click on Done. And let's unmute number one. Let's change 50 to zero again for input number two. And let's go to the output source. And we're going to change pink noise back to matrix. Now we can go to the macro menu and we can say let's run a macro. What macro do we want to run? Well it brings up the last macro we stored which is number 22 called cool macro. I'll click OK. And notice what happened. It went to pink noise on uh, output number 4. If we go to the inputs, number 2 is at 50 and we have mute at input number 1. So it ran the macro. Very nice. The other thing that we can do is we can assign that macro to one of our buttons. So once again, I'll unmute this. I'll change this back to zero. And I'll change the output source as well back to matrix. And now let's go to rear panel control. And let's assign a button to call that macro. Well, let's use button number three. Currently it's not used, and notice one of our options is run macro on close. What macro do you want to run? Well, we can type in our macro, which is 22. I'll hit return, and notice it says cool macro. That's the name of our macro, and also you get the run macro uh, command underneath the number three to kind of give you an indicator of what's assigned to the programmable inputs. Well, at this point I can just test it, if I wanted to, if I didn't have any hardware connected, I do have hardware connected. So I'm going to push button number three. Notice it lit up when, uh, when we did that. And let's go back and if we look at our output source, it ran the macro. We now have pink noise. And if we go to our inputs, we have a muted input number one and number two is back to 50. So it's just that easy to use a macro recorder and simply select from all of the various tabs, inputs and outputs and matrix and pink noise, whatever you want to do, make your selection, stop the macro recorder. The commands are automatically generated for you. Store that to a macro and then assign it to a button, and it's that easy. Then it, you're done. The other great thing about this is the macros not only can be tested without having hardware controlled, but they can also be triggered 
via a command through the RS-232 port. So a Crestron or AMX system or another third-party control system can simply issue a command to the RS-232 port or the IP port and the Aspen device will execute those commands. So it really um, adds a lot of control capability uh, to the Aspen by having all of those macros internal in the uh, Aspen series. Okay, let's go on to the next section.